here's the feedback that we'd like you to provide. One thing that we also didn't mention because like it's pretty much like an internal stuff, but uh, like the Slurm, like the Q has, has this kind of a priority calculation, priority weighting, which basically it's calculated based on your previous usage. So uh, in, at, in CSC, like uh, Jussi mentioned, they have billing units that basically tell how much like virtual currency you have to run inside of the uh, machine. In, in Alto, we don't have that kind of a, like a, like a cost uh, attached to computations, but there's like this kind of a priority cost in, in the Slurm itself. Like basically if you run, run stuff um, in the queue, it will uh, like lower your priority so that uh, like other people have their, they can run stuff as well. And how do you usually want to do it is that you want your uh, resource request to match what you actually want to do so that then the Slurm will, like Slurm will assume that you will use the resources that, that you are, uh, like when you're queuing, Slurm will assume that you will use the, all of the resources you're requesting. But after the job has finished, your uh, prior, like your cost uh, is calculated based on what you actually used. So let's say you put like a 10 hour job of 100 CPUs running, your priority, you, you go through the queue and your priority will dip because like you have this huge job running there. So uh, and because you're basically like using a lot, already a lot of resources. But if that code finishes in 10 minutes or like, like in an hour, uh, when you requested like five days, you will, uh, the priority will jump again. So you will get like this wave emotion into your priority calculation. So you're not actually like utilizing the resources yeah. efficiently. So you will be penalized because, oh, you will get less stuff through the queue if you have bad resource. Like so if you have miss the allocations are not so, specified correctly. So the more you run, the less you can run in the near future. So that tries to make a dynamic system to balance everything out. And in the end, the more efficient your stuff is, then the more you can run long term or mm. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but do leave us feedback. So um, yeah. hopefully you enjoyed the course and hopefully you get your stuff running. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was great sharing this time with you. Um, hopefully you're inspired about the kinds of things you can do. Mm. And maybe the most important thing to get out of it is that we are here for you. Like you're not yeah, alone. It, it's, yeah, it's all about being on the on the like like spectrum of uh, of different scientific computation. Like nobody is like in Finnish they're saying kukan ei ole seppä syntyessään. So nobody's like a Smith Smith when they're born. Like nobody mm. like mm -hmm. is is a professional when they are like when they start something nobody like uh, becomes a master of things immediately yeah. and and that's why like no, and we are definitely no masters in like like no no masters of the universe like so uh it's important to realize that okay i'm here i i can do this i want to do this i mm -hmm. want to move to us this direction and make use of the resources available to you so that you can get the best out of the systems and best out of the, well, like learn the most while you're working mm -hmm. uh, on your project, because that's, we are a very university anyways, like yeah. you're supposed to learn things here. So uh, 
try try to utilize the resources and the the materials to the best experience for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see. Are we getting any more questions coming in? Ah, here's a question. Sron.m. Uko, I think this is University of Helsinki PGPU. Mm. Hmm. So I think uh, you're one... asking for the partition, but you're not asking for the resource. Yeah. So I think the error is because of that, I would guess. But, but this last uh, line to me makes it think me think that NVIDIA SMI, the command cannot be found. Like the exact call of NVIDIA SMI itself doesn't work somehow. But yeah, this is something you should mm. discuss with the mm. support staff at Helsinki. Yeah, yeah, I think the like um, the like we are have tried to make it like a bit general, but of course, like we see it from our point of view because like we deal with our system constantly, so we we don't uh, mm-hmm. often we don't know how it well like everything looks uh, on the other side of well. Uh, in different places, but we like the generalities are that usually you need to request these general resources, mm-hmm. either this with this grace flag or uh, maybe or in the future with the upcoming like GPU flag uh, from CERN. But basically, you need to request for the resource. Then there's specialities for different sites that are, of course, well, they are di- like different for each site. But uh, like, anyways, like I would say that it's it's a good idea to to check uh, or like if if something if you felt like you understood what we were talking about uh, and you look at documentation uh, in your own site outside of Finland, for example, if you have if your site is somewhere in completely different place, you might still like try to find the the general information uh, that is that this is how they are usually handled. So the, the flags might change, the names of the systems might change, so stuff like that might change. But uh, yeah, usually yeah. Uh, stuff is very general. And like like what you said earlier, once you get into the habit of using these HPC systems, then sky's the limit usually. Like you can start moving uh, to different directions using the different systems and translating your co- code to different systems. It might require some time to get the correct flag set up for different systems. Uh, and you might have different scripts for different systems, but usually it's like, a, like once you know how to do it in one system, you can translate that information to other places as well. Yeah. Okay. I just got some pictures of my setup here. Okay. Um. Hmm. Anything else in HackMD? Okay, well, maybe we should say goodbye and thank everyone again for attending. We should thank all of the uh, instructors on day one and three. So you see Ankovara, uh, Enrico Glirion, um, Samantha Woodkey, who else was there? Radovan Bast. Okay. Yes, and also uh, remember to check out like different uh, affiliates, like 
code refinery and, and CSC and all of the different training material. Like usually, like uh, if you if somebody tells you one thing one way, somebody else can tell it another way, which is which suits your style of learning better. So mm. keep uh, keep that in mind and uh, look for information from our affiliates and uh, and people who we who we work with because yeah they do a good work yeah okay well i guess we can hang up so see you all for our next course or in our garage yeah. or maybe never bye bye